uh, Rocket Club's back together, and we finally get to come back to the Sanctuary Event Center. So I'm excited about May 12th. So it's all coming up hockey right now. I'm very excited. Well, we're we're excited as well. And I got to ask you, you know, eight years hiatus, uh, who made the phone call? Who said, okay, uh, it, it's time. Let's get the boys back. Who, who did it? Who pulled the trigger on this one, Chris? That's been controversial because we've been trying to figure that out since it happened. You know, we didn't actually, it wasn't just that we didn't do any music. We didn't really uh, see each other for six or six years or so. And- Welcome back to Afternoons Live. Tyler Axe is here, your host, Eric Johnson, our producer. And, you know, we've been looking forward to this conversation for quite some time. And, in fact, you know what? We've been looking for this reunion for even longer. The Rocket Club back eight years of a hiatus. You know what? They said it's time to get the boys back together here joining us uh, to tell you about that. Chris Hockey, vocals. Also, you know, Chris, because... Well, you know what? On our sister station, 740 The Fan, he is part of the Power Trip Morning Show. You can catch him every day, weekdays over there. And you know what? We're your home for Vikings Radio, and Chris is a big part of that production as well. Chris, welcome back to Afternoons Live, man. It's been too long. How you been? It's been way too long. I appreciate it. I'm doing really well, man. I'm excited for a million different reasons. I mean, the Vikings draft just happened, as you were just mentioning, yes. and uh, Rocket Club's back together, and we finally get to come back to the Sanctuary Event Center, so I'm excited about May 12th. So it's all coming up hockey right now. I'm very excited. Well, we're we're excited as well. And I, I got to ask you, you know, eight years hiatus, uh, who made the phone call? Who said, okay, uh, it, it's time. Let's get the boys back. Who, who did it? Who pulled the trigger on this one, Chris? That's been controversial because we've been trying to figure that out since it happened. You know, we didn't actually, it wasn't just that we didn't do any music. We didn't really uh, see each other for six or six years or so. And um, one of the members, Don Smith Meyer, um, the other singer and one of the principal songwriters was having his 50th birthday party and his wife and Joel Sales, um, one of the other members of Rocket Club got together and said, let's throw a surprise party. So we were all sitting in his garage one day when he came home. And that was the first time we'd been in the same room together in a long time. And uh, it just kind of um, it was just great to to talk to those guys, to uh, to be around each other. But more than anything. Uh, to reunite with the music as well. We sat in his garage that night and played through, I think, every song we'd ever written and a bunch we hadn't written and just reminded us how much we loved playing music together. You know, music is, is one of those things that does kind of bring people together. It doesn't matter backgrounds, yeah. it doesn't matter you know, worldviews. It's one of those things in that moment when you guys get on stage or in a garage, whatever it is, it just takes you to a whole different level. Obviously, you with your your background, your experience in, in a variety of different ways with music, man, you know, you know full well how that is and glad that it came to be that way yeah you know you're you're so right and i've said that a bunch of times on stage that uh, for me I, I one of the things i love so much about going to concerts and being a part of concerts is that it doesn't matter who you're standing beside you you don't have any idea what their background is what their political beliefs are what their uh, religious beliefs are it doesn't matter you're all there united under music and i think that's one of the great uniters of mankind and and how much do we need that right now and uh that's that's what it does for us uh you know on a giant level but what it's done for rock club on a smaller level as well is bring a bunch of guys back together who just missed each other who uh we had this great run we rode that rocket uh for a long time and and got really really um i would say probably higher in the sky than we expected and then we went our separate ways. We raised our kids. I, you know, I, I obviously everybody had a job and kids to raise. And once we had kind of all gotten to the point in our lives again, where we had a little bit extra time, finding music again was, you know, finding family again and, and finding joy and finding in a lot of ways peace with what had happened the first time around. You mentioned the first time around, maybe that rocket got higher than you expected. I mean, yeah. what are the only band in Minnesota that has uh, three billboard chart hits on the, on the countryside one of those regular listeners of afternoon's live here here's north country every single week oh, yeah we play th- yeah, we uh i'm from the devil's lake area up in north dakota and we we check yeah. in with them walleye fishing and it's one of those songs that north country just want to grab a beer and go sit on uh, on the lake side and so we play that every week so people uh, are familiar very much with uh you know that hit but i i'm curious because i, I think it's probably best described from you the sound of rocket club because uh chris i was listening to the new album and you know your first single of easy rolls into uh self-destructive tendencies and the two (laughs) sounds are so different so uh, explain your sound as best you can for rocket club yeah um well first of all thank you for playing north country and i appreciate that very much and and, you know as i've been traveling around uh, even just with the chris hockey band for years and years everywhere i went 
uh, people knew that song and it's because of people like you and shows like yours. So thank you so much for that, to keep that, that alive for us. It means a lot. Um, Rocket Club started as a band that was built around songwriting and harmonies. That was, in fact, the first thing that we all talked about is let's get together and sing and, and play music sort of like the Eagles and such like that. Um, and that turned into a couple of songs that, as you mentioned, did make the Billboard country charts. And we would go to these country music festivals all over the country and people were always great to us. But when we told them we were from Minnesota, they would say, Minnesota, there's no country bands in Minnesota. And that kind of got us to thinking, you know, and instead of arguing the point or even continuing to explain it, we decided, well, there's Southern rock will be North country. And that was our ideal. And that was the song that uh, Don and Joel and Brian wrote. And, and it kind of uh, was a comment on not only uh, the kind of music we play, but the kind of people we are and the kind of people that I don't think Southerners or Midwesterners know exist up here. We have John Deere tractors. We go fishing. We are country. We're just North country. And that's that kind of was our marching orders and the kind of the music that we played. As far as the style of music we played, I think you're right to say uh, it's a, a little bit different than your average country band. Um, we do stray into rock and we stray into uh, perhaps, uh, um, you know, easy listening stuff. Even, you know, you might listen to some things and think that belongs on a, a yacht rock radio. Um, I, I think the number one thing that we always came back to and that we still do is that the songwriting matters the most and the words and the, and the, the harmonies. So we, especially on this new record, allowed the songs to become what they wanted to be. So you're right. Self-destructive tendencies. That's a, I still don't know what happened there. I mean, we recorded that at a studio all in the same room together and it just became what it is completely unlike anything else on the record. Then you got a song like easy, which is, is getting some traction on country radio. Um, the, what matters to us as a band is that the the songs matter, that they they are Rocket Club songs. If they end up being a rock song or a country song or an easy listening song, we're cool with it. It just has to mean something to us. Mean something. And uh, I mean, you know, it, to the, the Southern boys out there that think that they've got a grip on, on the definition of what country is, I gotta take issue with that. But you guys do a, a hell of a good job of reclaiming ours up here across the upper Midwest as well. Chris Hockey's our guest at Rocket Club. Power Trip Morning Show, Vikings Radio, all the above. And, and I, I love you start there. How the hell do you do it? I mean, I'm looking at your tour. You got Duluth to Fargo, and there's no easy way to get to and from Duluth from this area. It's nope. a five-hour drive. You got a morning show, obviously very popular across. I just how do you do it? You know, um, I, I'm asked that a lot, and I, I think the the answer that I, I've come up with that um, is the best is, I get to do it. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I love doing my morning radio show. You know, I mean, that's the secret. I hate to let it out on your show here. And I hope you don't mind me saying this, but we've got the best job in the world, man. We do radio, right? I mean, it's the greatest. We get to relay information. I always tell people that I go to work every morning and my job is to try to make my friends laugh. How great is that? Right? So I get to do that. I get to work for the Minnesota Vikings, which is somebody who stopped growing at five, six in the sixth grade, I never thought I'd be working for a, a professional football team. So that's the coolest ever. And then to to um, to get on stage and sing with this band, with the Fabulous Armadillos, with the Chris Hockey Band, it's um, I, I there, there's always at least three steps, right? When you're walking onto a stage, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's seven, almost always there's at least three. And those steps, when I go from being on the ground to taking those steps and being on the stage, I get to... I get to become the person I always wanted to be, the kid I dreamed I was going to be when I was pretending to be Bon Jovi and, and paying the neighbor kids to flip the light switch on and off. So I had a light show, you know? Um, so I, I, I do it all because I get to do it. You know, I, I feel so very lucky that people continue to want to hear me sing, that they keep listening to the radio show and that I keep getting on that, uh, that chartered plane to every Vikings game, win or loss. Uh, well, you're, you're right about this. You know, I used to just talk for free and then they decided somebody got crazy and said, Hey, we'll pay you to do this. Yeah. So, yeah. We don't, don't, don't tell them that they, they, we definitely deserve to be paid. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> you know, bonuses aren't a bad thing either, but uh, I've that, heard about those things. Yeah. I uh, heard about them received uh, the topic of conversation off air. <laughs> uh, you know, Chris, uh, you're going to be back here and you mentioned the, the sanctuary event center, unique venue. I mean, it's an old church that they've redone to a stage. Uh, I, you guys have been all over the area here. I, what's, what's the stadium, the, the venue that stands out to you? I said, God, this place is something special here. Well, I can, I can tell you, and uh, I'm not just saying it because I'm talking to you. I, I love playing the sanctuary. Um, you know, and I've talked to the, a couple of the guys have never gotten to play there. Um, 
there's something to be said about how you sound to yourself as a singer, as an, as a, any kind of a, a musician uh, in the sanctuary, that room was built for vocals. You can feel it when you're standing on that stage, you can play a show in there without a PA system and sound good. The better you sound to yourself, the better you are in my opinion. So I love playing the sanctuary because of that. So I, I, I love that place. And I'm hoping we pack the place on, on the 12th here. So it, it uh, we get as many bodies in there as possible. And it sounds as good as possible. I, I love playing there. We just played a show in the Twin Cities here. We sold out a place called the Varsity Theater, which is right down by the University of Minnesota. It's been there since 1918 or something like that. I tend to love the places with history. I, I, I know it's it's very odd sounding, and um, it, but I, I, I will always say when you walk into a room where people have been performing and living and striving for their dreams – for a hundred years, you're carrying on the stage with you all those people who came before you and all the people who come after you and 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 people who had their their hearts broken um, by their dreams, people who lived out their dreams or people whose dream was just to stand on that stage. You can feel the ghost of those people and, and carrying them on the stage with you. It's like um, you, you just keep feeding the river. And and um, if one person comes to the sanctuary on May 12th and here's Rocket Club and it inspires them to get into a band and they write one song that changes somebody's life that's feeding the river. And that's kind of our job at this point. You know, Chris, uh, what you're saying just, uh, it reminds me of, you know, uh, I work with a great news team here and uh, they're, they're not only professional news broadcasters, they're big rock and rollers. Uh, they have a big vinyl collection and, uh, and they talk about going to, you know, some of those acts that have come to Fargo all those years ago, whether it was, you know, the early uh, Fleetwood Mac renditions and uh, all that. And, and, those venues still there and hearing those guys relive it you can see that they go back to that moment of seeing you know stevie nicks when the wind blew at an outdoor concert and she was uh, you know the how everything flowed it gives them chills talking to about it to this day so i mean it, it, you're you're right and being on the other side of that being that person that people are going to be watching and idolizing and saying man this guy is living the dream here uh, and that's something special my friend well I, i'll tell you that um that is something that that I can feel and that I strive for and that I, I hope that, and I feel like we do communicate. And, you know, when, when people come to the sanctuary on May 12th and, and, and they, they look on stage and they hear the music, uh, the guy in the middle there, uh, the chubby guy, hopefully doesn't have a mustache anymore by then, but the, ch the chubby guy in the middle of the stage there, um, they're literally seeing a guy living his dream, you know, and uh, that is the kind of joy that I'm feeling that I think I'm communicating to the people out in the audience. And i I just want people to have fun. I want people to have that experience you were just talking about. I want to, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be a Stevie Nicks or a Fleetwood Mac, but I want to give people that, that emotion. You know, I, um, when I'm singing a song like Come On Home, the title track to the new record, which is, uh, you know, a very emotional song. And there's a middle part in the bridge where I talk about, uh, you know, it's specifically about your kids going off to college and leaving the nest. You're becoming an empty nester. I want to communicate that emotion. There's somebody in the audience who's feeling that right now and needs to know they're not alone, you know? Um, I just think that's so important. And, and as you mentioned a few moments ago, music is the best facilitator of that kind of connection uh, that I can think of. I, I can't think of anything else that connects people more than music. Chris, that music's going to be heard at Sanctuary Event Center May 12th. Uh, tickets are available. This this album, though, where can people find it? Can they download it? Can they, they what, just give them the, the roadmap to sure. get to where they find uh, the Rocket Club. It's really easy. You can get tickets to the shows. Uh, you can buy the the record, an actual album, by the way. We actually created an album as well at rocketclub.band, rocketclub.band. Um, and you can listen to the songs anywhere, Amazon, uh, YouTube, Apple Music. I don't care if you pay for it or just down, I, to get it somehow. Just listen to the songs. I probably shouldn't say that. I'm in here by myself right now, which is good. But I just want people to hear the music. I, I really love this band and these songs and, and – um, I'm just so grateful to be a part of this band again, man. And I really hope you're coming. And I'm telling you right now, I could use another backup singer. I know you can sing. I know you've always wanted to be on stage. You want to be our Stevie Nicks. I think you got this. I mean, I, I can maybe get a costume on. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 monotone in the back behind somebody, maybe. If that's what you're <laughs> we'll take it. I might be yeah. your man. Uh, that's the uh, missing ingredient right there. Yeah, just that stoic, uh, non uh, non emotion. Okay, oh, maybe we got a deal, but we'll find out that night. 
uh chris hockey my friend uh people can check you out obviously before the morning uh the power trip morning show 740 the fan or sister station we're looking forward to having you back in fargo uh for the, this concert and we're going to be sending people your way and we'll be joining you as well is there anything you want to get up before i let you go you know, I just want to say again, I, I um, it means a lot that you gave me the opportunity to talk about the show on your show. I appreciate it very much. And, you know, I just hope people will give us a chance. I mean, you, you already know when you go into the Sanctuary Event Center that you're going to love the facility. Um, I think you're going to love the music. Give it a listen and, and come out and, and experience the joy of a bunch of guys um, who uh, found each other and found the love of the music again and, and uh, are still doing it and um, still feeding the river after all these years. Chris Hockey, ladies and gentlemen, the Rocket Club is going to be at the Sanctuary Event Center May 12th. We'll tell you how you can get tickets right through here on After News Live. You got to lock into KFG Fargo. Chris, until then, you take care. We'll chat on uh, May 12th, all right? Thank you, my friend. Go Vikes. Go Vikes. Skull. Chris Hockey, again, uh, that's going to be May 12th.